वेलकम बैक वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन फंडामेंटल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स द डायोड सर्किट्स लेट एस टेक द डिस्कशन फॉरवर्ड एंड विल डिस्कस द पीक इनवर्स वोल्टेज एंड द सर्च करेंट इन द डायोड सर्किट्स वट यू मीन बाई पीक इनवर्स वोल्टेज सो द पीक इनवर्स वोल्टेज इज द मैक्सिमम वोल्टेज दैट इज द डायोड हैज टू विथ स्टैंड वेन इट इज नॉट कंडक्टिंग so when the diode is under the off state then what is the maximum voltage that the diode will withstand when it is under non conducting state there is certain requirement for the peak inverse voltage it has to be less than the diode breakdown voltage so the breakdown voltage of the diode will be specified and the peak inverse voltage has to be less than that breakdown voltage worst case wait temper if we think then the capacitor input filter voltage will be the peak inverse voltage of the diode or that which it has to withstand there are different symbols that we use for the peak inverse voltage that is the peak inverse voltage peak reverse voltage breakdown voltage reverse breakdown voltage reverse recovery voltage and the reverse maximum voltage so different symbols have been used to specify the peak inverse voltage we will see for the half wave rectifier using the capacitor input filter what is the peak inverse voltage so when you, we have the half wave rectifier we will have only one diode and there is a capacitor which is connected after the diode so the critical part we have to determine the reverse voltage which the diode has to withstand and the worst case the peak secondary voltage when it is negative capacitor will be fully charged <laughs> we have seen in the previous lecture that there will be transformer connected which is step down transformer this transformer is used to reduce the input supply voltage which is quite high requirement for the electronics so the secondary voltage will be less than the primary voltage with respect to the turns ratio now the secondary voltage is ac waveform so it means that when the ac will be going negative the maximum negative voltage that the diode has to withstand let us take the example to be vp sure mm. so if we take the reverse voltage to be vp then the diode has to withstand the peak inverse voltage of twice the secondary negative voltage that is 2 vp if the peak secondary voltage we take an example of 15 volt then in that case the peak inverse voltage will be twice that of the secondary maximum output that is 30 volt so diode must have the breakdown voltage greater than peak inverse voltage so whatever the peak inverse voltage we have got in this case is 30 volt then the diode has to be having the breakdown voltage which is more than 30 volt now let us take the example of full wave rectifier with center tapping and capacitor input filter we are using so we have basically two diode in this case because it is center tap and full wave again the critical part has to determine the peak inverse voltage secondary voltage will be at negative peak so again when the ac cycle cycle will be given to the secondary of the transformer then at the negative part whatever the maximum voltage we have that is minus of vm that will be given to the secondary of the transformer now in this case we have two diode and let us take the lower diode which is close switch or we can say short so the when it is short obviously the current will start flowing through this diode and the upper diode let us take it to be reverse biased so it will treat as open circuit and the peak inverse voltage then in that case in the negative half cycle we has to withstand this entire voltage which is appearing in the secondary of the transformer so which is vp on the other hand if we have the bridge rectifier configuration for the full wave rectifier and the capacitor input filter is there then again the critical part has to determine the peak inverse voltage now again we see since it is a full wave bridge rectifier again we will have two diodes which are operating at the same time and the diode which is short will be acting as a closed switch and the other diode will be open so the peak inverse voltage again coming from the secondary of the transformer which is vp it has to withstand so it has the lowest peak inverse voltage for a given load voltage so if the load voltage is vl then the peak inverse voltage that these 
configuration has to withstand is the lowest one compared to the full wave rectifier also because that will require half the secondary voltage from the same load voltage. We have seen that in center tap full wave rectifier only half of the voltage is coming to the load. So whatever the voltage we have on the secondary side Vs, we will get only Vs by 2 as the load voltage. So the bridge rectifier is having better peak inverse voltage which is lowest in this case as compared to the full wave rectifier. We have seen the peak inverse voltage. Now let us see the role of the surge register. So in the surge register, uh, when we have the filter capacitor which is initially uncharged. So let us take this circuit of the full wave rectifier in the bridge rectifier configuration and there is a capacitor filter connected in the circuit with the load register given as RA. So. so the filter capacitor will be initially uncharged so there will be no charge present initially in the capacitor. So capacitor initial voltage will be zero. Now when we turn on the supply the capacitor act as a short circuit. It is a closed switch so it will act as a short circuit and the initial charging current may be very large. So whatever the current is drawn from the circuit it will be very very large because it is the initial condition. How do we define the surge current? Surge current is basically the initial rush of the current. So at the start of the circuit whatever the current is being drawn from the circuit that is very high and that is the initial current. This current is known as the sur surge current. So the charging path if we can think the transformer will have some resistance and there will be resistance in the diode also. So diode will have some bulk resistance we have discussed in previous lectures and the transformer will also have resistance. So both the resistance will offer opposition to the surge current. So the designer choice would be either you take the diode which is having a sufficient current rating or you use a surge register. Now this surge register is basically connected in between the bridge rectifier and the capacitor input filter. So we have the bridge rectifier here and the capacitor input filter that is connected between the bridge rectifier and the capacitor input filter. Surge register reduces the surge current to a safe level. So whatever the current is coming from the bridge rectifier, the surge register will reduce that surge current. However, surge registers are very infrequent in use. They are not obviously used. We use the diodes which are of high current rating because it will have certain losses. We will take the one example to understand with this circuit only where the input voltage is 120 volt 60 hertz and there is a step down transformer of N1 is to N2. So the problem is what is the peak inverse voltage if the diode turns ratio of the transformer is 8 is to 1. The diode has a breakdown voltage of 50 volt which is given to us. Now we have to decide whether it is safe to use the diode in this circuit. So given a transformer where the primary is connected at 120 volt, then in that case the transformer is 8 is to 1 turns ratio. So the secondary voltage is basically 120 by 8 and we get 15 volt. Now this is the RMS voltage so we have to get the secondary peak voltage which we, have, we will be dividing with root 2. So 15 volt we have got on the secondary of the transformer which is RMS voltage this 15 volt we will have to divide with root 2 or 0 0.707 so we get 21.2 volt so the 21.2 volt if you see in the AC cycle the, the negative maximum will be minus 21.2 volt so the peak inverse voltage in magnitude term we can say 21.2 volt however the breakdown voltage of the diode is 50 volt which is more than the peak inverse voltage so the diode is more than adequate to sustain the peak inverse voltage as it is less than the breakdown voltage of 50 volt. Hence, we can say that the circuit is safe to operate. Now, if we compare the capacitor input filter rectifiers for all the configuration half wave, full wave and the bridge rectifier, we have done this comparison in terms of number of diodes and that is half wave will be having one diode, full wave center tap will have two diode, bridge rectifier will have four diode. Rectifier input is what we have on the secondary side, if we take VP in the half wave, the center tap will have half of that and the bridge rectifier will have the same output. Input. DC output, again the center tap will be half whereas both half wave and full wave will have the maximum as VP. DC output 
uh, if we take the approximation and subtracting the 0.7 volt, which is the forward voltage drop in half wave, in full wave also center tap will have 0.7 volt, but for bridge rectifier we have to subtract 1.4 volt because two diode will be in operation. The ripple frequency, if you see, uh, if it is the same as the supply frequency for half wave, but for full wave in both configuration, it is double of the input frequency. Peak inverse voltage, if we see, it is double for the half wave rectifier from the transformer secondary, but for both full wave and bridge rectifier, it is same as the secondary voltage. Diode current, on the other hand, if we have IDC in the half wave, it is half in case of full wave rectifier. So among all the rectifiers, we know that the bridge rectifier is the one which is the most uh, oftenly used and the best one in terms of the peak inverse voltage, ripple frequency and other factors. So this completes the discussion on peak inverse voltage and surge current. Coming lectures, we will discuss more on rectifier circuits. Thank you for an